Okay, so I know it's been a while. Sorry. <laughs> um, but I've actually got my next project. One of the reasons why I had taken a while getting to this is because I was doing some research on it. Um, the one thing I love about war games is the research that can be done ahead of time where you can learn more about it and things like that. So, so this one, um, what I've got here is, it's actually not Custard Last Stand, it's actually the Quebec 1775 um, game. Uh, it's Strategy and Tactics, uh, number 236, it has both games. Um, it's called They Died With Their Boots On, volume number one. Um, and basically, what it is about is, if you can take a look at this, the 1775 invasion of Canada by the, at that time, Continental Forces. Um, so this is basically what I've got going um, right now. I've gone through a couple turns and things like that to test it all out. And this is basically a game of two, um, two halves. But... Uh, like I said, I did some research, and this is Battle for the 14th Colony, um, America's War of Liberation in Canada, and very good book um, by Mark R. Anderson. Um, very good, very thorough. Um, it gets more into the political aspect of it um, and the military aspect. But the fact that how we don't have Canada as one of our colonies, um, there was an opportunity there that was definitely missed. So let me go over some of the, the rules with this video and kind of introduce it. Um, I've kind of set things up. Uh, like I said, this is, a vi this is a game of two halves. Um, first of all, there's... Um, show the chart here. Yeah. Okay, so we have the the turn record track, and what we have here, we have a couple different things here. One is we have the the heroes and markers, which I'll get into, and the reinforcements. So A is American um, reinforcements, and if you look, there's an E here. Oh, let me zoom this back out. If you look on turn four here, there's an E here. The first British don't actually get here, and I don't think they're that much, until January, February of 76, during the winter turn. It's really not that much. Um, what they ended up having to go through um, was quite a bit, actually. Um, we got, uh, or we, the uh, Continentals at this time got all the way up to Quebec historically, and so they made it from Ticonderoga. The New York area here and made it all the way up to Quebec okay so and they did this within the first in in this game first three turns they were November December and they were attacking um, one of the biggest issues I have with this is they started in August of 75 but a lot of the reinforcements didn't get there till midwinter and uh, there was a lot of uh, attrition due to contracts and um, things being up on that sort so there were some real issues with that so so we have a couple things here um, we have Quebec uh, we have very few British troops here we've got Fort St. John, Montreal, Chambly, the Toa Rivers there is one uh, St. Lawrence ship here And it's got a 24 move in attack, but the plus is a shift uh, on the um, combat. And you can have one unit with that. Um, so well, that works out. And then you have one unit in Troy River. And then we have two un well, one unit and one supply train here um, right outside Quebec. And then we have the siege. Again, the two pluses, the plus signs, are the actual... Um, uh, combat shifts um, and there's some interesting things that happen uh, with the combat shifts uh, with the combat um, tables uh, the tables are actually there's two tables there's actually a skirmish and a I'll flip this over so you can see it 
There's actually a skirmish table and a there we go. You can see it. So there's a skirmish table, which the results are not as um, definitive as the charge combat table. The charge combat table can do more damage as the um, attacker. Um, and so um, in some cases, if you have the numbers, it's more um, determinative on that. Um, so, but the thing is, is you have to be in supply to use the charge. If not, you have to use a skirmish. Um, at the end of each turn, if you're not in supply, you have to do an attrition uh, roll. Um, and there's a couple of ways to be in supply. Um, so let's take a look at that. So, as I said earlier, um, even the Americans have... Um, this uh, little supply train here. Okay. There we go. Uh, has a little supply train. So even, you know, you can have those and those don't have to be their supply trains. Um, but if you look here in Quebec, and let's zoom in on Quebec here. You see the little half circle down there? That is a supply position. So there's one in Quebec, uh, Tour River. Uh, it's just a river. We have one in Montreal. We have one in Fort St. John. Um, let's see here, what do we got? Not Crown Point, but we do have it here in Fort Ticonderoga. So, um, during the non-winter turns, you have to be two spots from either the half circle or from the supply train. So you have to be two hexes away. Uh, during the winter time, you have to be one hex away. So, and we get more hexes in there. So it, it has a few different things. Um, there's also militia involved. Uh, once the units go from from down here and cross this border here, um, you can actually pull some militia. So as we get to that, I'll point that out. So that'll be first. And then what's interesting is the U.S. also has um, uh, uh, militia as well. I don't know if I can get this chart out of the way here. So the U.S. has militia as well. So you can kind of see it, but there's there's a border right here. And so we have New York, we have New Hampshire, and then we have Maine and no Vermont. Uh, nope. Okay. And if, okay. Um, so we have these different items here. Um, so if the British troops ever make it down into these areas, there's actually militia specifically for each one. Um, and those militia will jump in. The other thing is, is once we take over, um, once the Continentals take over, like Fort St. John, Montreal, there's militia on that side or Continentals on that side. Um, so, like, we have here... Let's see here. So, this one is Fort St. John. So when we ever take over St. John's, we get this this unit as well so that's kind of cool um let's see here there we've got militia here um so now a couple of the other things we have is the fact that um this was before arnold actually um got was bad <laughs> or turned on us um and this is actually the battle where things started to go bad he gets injured and then of course washington um neglects um to believe he's such a good officer or so he thinks and so he he ends up between him and his wife uh you know he ends up you know trying to uh turn code us so um but so this is a chip pull game and what I've got here is I've got the different ones in here. So there's Carlton, 
Um, I can tell that the British is not going to be when you get that pulled. Um, so there's the northern, but if you notice, there's no northern on here yet. We have to wait for the reinforcements to come in, but we still have to put the chit in there. Um, so it's a chit pull game, so we really don't know. You can plan as much as you want to, um, but you really don't know how things are going to go until you're, the chit is pulled for that activation, um, which I kind of like. It makes it playing solo easier. Uh, the one thing I will say is it does make a little is these heroes and markers. So everybody we all start out with each side starts out with one so in this case this one is someone blundered so what i would do is i'd look up in the directions exactly what that is and before battle or in some cases not um each player could play one of these um we can have a maximum of six per turn um and each one of those six um then goes through uh, then you can use one in during a battle and things like that. So, um, so I have my continental side set up here, and then I have my uh, British side set up over here. Uh, so we've got Burgoyne that is not here yet. Um, so, uh, but in his, historically speaking, um, the reason why I said this is the tale of kind of like two halves of a game, or maybe even uh, two thirds, one third, and then two thirds of the other, is the fact that um, the British were waiting, and because of the weather, because it was winter, they couldn't actually um, do anything. Uh, they were waiting for uh, to get um. Uh, reinforcements from mainland Britain over, you know, way up here. You know, this is St. Lawrence Seaway, St. Lawrence River, you know, that we were waiting for them to come, but because it was frozen, they couldn't get here. So you're looking at the troops you have here are basically the troops you have until those reinforcements come. And so basically the first part of the game is extending the Continentals up in through here and trying to take... Um, Quebec. Um, it's a victory point game, meaning that you win by points. Um, uh, so it, there's three ways to get points. You can get points at the end of each turn, and then as well as um, at the end of the game, you get some bonus. So if the Americans do get Quebec at the end of the game, they'll get additional seven points, and then you take up, you add up how many points there are between the American and then the British, and then we can, then you can figure out, you know, how things go and who wins and everything like that. Um, so it's pretty simple on that. There are some interesting uh, zones of control are not sticky; they don't affect any movement. Um, there's a movement phase and there's a combat phase, so you can move right through the zones of control, no problem. Uh, the one aspect is, is if you happen to be in a zone of control at the beginning of the combat sub phase, you actually have to you have to attack, um, no matter what. So, uh, it that's which isn't a big deal. I mean, it's neither here nor there. Um, it's the the interesting things you know as goes through, um. Uh, I've gone through the directions a couple times. I want to read it once more for really get through the playthrough. Um, but uh, uh, I'm about ready to get started on this. But I kind of wanted to give an idea. So we're doing Quebec 75. This is um, uh, it's actually a folded map. But if we on the other side, they actually have the uh, last Custer's last stand. Um, so it actually uh, does have that capability to play Custer's last stand on that. So, but we are currently, you know, working, th I'm currently working through this. Um, we've got, uh, so that's kind of what I've got. I've got things set up. One of the interesting things is the major rivers can be used kind of like highways um, and lakes. Um, they use this uh, bateau movement um, so what you can do is you can move along here at, just like it was a road. Um, so, you know, it's a half movement piece. So it's, you know, one, half one, half two, half three. Well, if you look like this one has the, the counters, let me pull a counter up here. The counter has two numbers on it. It has the combat strength, which is the three and the movement, which is the seven. So you can really use... Um, the uh, combat strength 
um, or the the bateau movement really helpful, um, especially because you can see you can move up here uh, through. So it's real easy to get troops up and through. Um, there are some flanking maneuvers. So if you actually attack from adjacent side hexes, uh, you can get a combat shift that way. Um, you know, artillery that you do have, like there's an artillery. Um, that artillery does do a positive shift for you. So, I mean, you really want to make sure you get the, um, the artillery involved in this if you can to help out. Um, again, the pluses tell you how many shifts you go. So, um, if these two are going against each other, it would negate each other. So you really want to have the shift because this would help. This would go left one shift. This would go right one shift and you'd be all good so so that's where you know these bateau movements really help the only thing is is to start you have to be in supply to use the bateau movement and i hope i'm saying that right but you have to have half of that um so you know i i had started it and i didn't realize that movement and uh it really um you know, if you look going up here, it's one, two, three, four, five, seven. You know, barely get up there. Um, and that's if you're starting here. Um, and this, like this hex right here, would be uh, two movement pieces because you use the the, uh, the forest takes two two movements. Yeah, the rough. Oh, three. Rough in Quebec or forest is two. The brown is the rough. And you take the highest. So in this case, even though that's there, but the bateau movements basically you're just moving up ships up up the river and up Lake Champlain uh, and Lake George. Um, it's the 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 book really talks a lot about the um, lack of um, specific um, ideas, um, real issues with. Um, Everybody thought that as soon as the Continental Troops came up to Montreal, they'd open up their gates, uh, mainly because they used to be French subjects. Um, and, of course, during the French-American War, that really didn't... Um, the French and Indian War, sorry. Um, the French lost control of Canada, and the British took over. So they, they a lot of people thought that, hey, when we walk up, they'd open our gates. Well, in Montreal, that was kind of true, but when we got to go back, all of the loyal... British subjects moved into Quebec. Um, so it was really, um, it was really going into Quebec that actually did a lot. Um, that made a difference. Um, I can tell just by the troop quality that the U.S. troop quality is quite a bit lower than um, the, uh, the British troop quality. Um, the one... So we'll definitely have to do more massive troops. Um, and to be honest with you, historically, um, they never got Quebec. And to the point is, it took so long. They had troubles with um, enlistments running out. They had um, just a ton of troubles. And when they found when the recruits got back to from to Britain, or when the reinforcements, excuse me got back they actually made a big push and so that's kind of where the line is uh, today and kind of where it was you know that's kind of where it got separated there we had Maine so um, we'll have Arnold's command coming in over at Fort Western over here um, all the way down here and he was supposed to meet up in Quebec so uh, the one other thing that the um, British or the U.S. does have is they have a Gates command, and Horatio Gates, uh, very good hero, very big guy in uh, the Revolutionary War. Um, he's kind of like that wild um, card when he gets put into the pull. When he gets put, you can activate any of your any of your sub commands on the um, American side. The only issue with that is. Um, you can't, if they get pulled again that same turn, they can't activate. So this is a 13, yeah, 13 turn game. There are some short scenarios and some long scenarios. Um, I'm doing the full scenario. I think it's uh, definitely worthwhile on that. Um, 
Yeah, they even have it set up as short and extended scenarios, start British counteroffensive scenario. So basically, once you get into, it becomes a counteroffensive at, the, at that point. So, so um, I'll be working on this. I'm going to go through the directions one more time, the rules one more time, just to make sure I've got a good handle on it. And then uh, you'll start seeing updates on this. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, I the main reason why I do a lot of these games is because of the historic. Um, I just actually got a pretty cool, it's really simple, small little pocket game from uh, uh, Against the Odds. I got some of their um, magazine game boxes because um, I have a few print and plays that I have and it just makes it easy to put those in those boxes. Um, but you got one of their free pocket games and it was Morgan's A Common. And it's all about the Ohio, the raids that um, Morgan conducted during the Civil War in Ohio and in Indiana. Um, and particularly in this case, it's just Ohio they have. Um, real short, easy game. I played about three games of it. It's really small. Um, I may do one of those real quick. Um, you use a deck of cards. There's like five, uh, more than that. But there are very few um, actual um, units, pieces, um, counters. Um, so and this was not too bad on the counter clip on the counter counters um, most of them actually were for this game um, I still have the uh, still haven't pulled out the uh, Custer's last stand I might do that but I have um, the Legion Legion war games um, I have all their American Indian wars which is three of them and one of them's um, the you know the battle of little bighorn so um, I'll let you go. Uh, I'll get started on this. Um, just kind of real quick. The map's kind of, it's pretty cool. I mean, for a magazine game, pretty cool. Um, but the uh, each hex is 9.3 miles. I meant to, meant to say that. And one of the big reasons why I chose this one as my next playthrough is because of this guy here. Particularly. And those that have watched some of my other videos know that this is uh, a meaningful uh, my fifth sixth great-grandfather actually um, uh, was in the fourth New York um, I do think he came after this particular battle but uh, so I'm gonna be doing a lot of the Revolutionary War uh, get battles I think they'll be interesting uh, which really is kind of in you know I think I'll be able to do some more of that um, but that's kind of why I chose this one. So um, I'll get started on this, and as soon as I get in the first couple turns done, I'll upload it. I'm going to upload this right now. Thanks a lot. Talk to you guys later. Bye.